Hi there, I'm Joshua Finn from JNH Aerospace. This is last uh, season's Science Olympiad uh, offering from Stevens Aero. This is the 2018-2019 uh, Simon 30. And today we have this year's version, which has been updated. It's still called the Simon 30, but it's a 28 centimeter wingspan instead of 30. Um, it does say it's a 30 square inch wing, so pretty cool stuff. We reviewed this one last year. I found it flew pretty nicely. Uh, I never have gotten to fly it indoors. Um, just uh, keep, never got around to taking it to a, a, an indoor flying session. Um, I had a few issues with um, some things with getting it to fly, and then once I finally um, dealt with those issues, uh, I got it flying very beautifully. Uh, and the, the issue was that the uh, recommended CG, which is right here, is about a uh, at least an eighth, of, I think almost a quarter of an inch forward of where it's recommended on here. Um, and with this small tail, that's very, very sensitive. Um, so once I corrected, that flew great. Um, it is a little on the heavier side. I don't remember what this one weighs. I'll have to just pop out the scale here on camera. Um, shows I have not done my research, but um, woods of uh, decently light grade, not you know not spectacularly light, but it's it's decent. Um, and the weight is 7.2 grams with ballast. Um, that's a bit on the high side. Uh, to, to be completely honest. Um, that's the, the weight that you would want to launch this airplane 100 feet up. Um, in fact, the gliders we were building for Johnson City uh, were, um, I think, 5.5 to 6, maybe 6.5, something like that. Um, so yeah, it's a little on the porky side for that. Uh, but regardless, um, good flying airplane, uh, easy enough to get it to fly, it's fairly intuitive. You fly a right-left pattern or a left-left pattern and it, and it flies very nicely. Um, includes some cool jigs in it, uh, so some neat stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop open uh, this year's version, um, and I'm going to step on a, on a limb and quite frankly I'm going to say that it's probably just a slight modification of last season's airplane. Um, Steven Zero has a lot of stuff they produce, and they don't have the development time that those of us that really concentrate hot and heavy on uh, Science Olympiad um, that, that, that we do. So there's that. Um, one thing I will kind of ding this airplane on, uh, it's, it's very cool. Like I said, from last year, very high quality airplane uh, in, in terms of the quality of the build. Uh, the laser cutting is amazing, etc. Um, but it's $35 for a kit that builds two airplanes. For comparison, uh, Guru Engineering Tech sells their airplane for $33, uh, and that's for four airplanes, so less than half the price. We sell the Protege kits for $40, so $5 more than this guy's kit, but ours builds uh, three airplanes. Um, I think Retro RC's uh, glider uh, costs about the same as this. I'm, I can't remember what I paid for this year's model. I think it's, I don't know, 35 bucks, something like that. Um, and again, nice kit. Uh, but if, if you're re unless you're flying in higher ceilings, this is probably not the optimal thing. Um, but again, they can be made to fly very nicely as a sport model. This thing is fantastic because you can take it outside and you can fly it. It flies very, very nicely. Um, for for sport gliders, I, I think it's it's one of the best out there. Um, other than the fact you have to be careful about the, the trim being a little different from uh, what's typical with the rest of them. Um, it does have some power limits since it's one sixteenth balsa wing. You can't really go full bore with it or you'll blow it up. Um, but anyway. Setting that aside, that's where we are. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut off the camera for a minute. I'm going to read through the instructions make sure nothing's changed. And then we'll come back in. I promise I have not untaped anything. There's the parts baggies. You saw me cut it open on camera, so I'm not cheating. Uh, like I did with the Guru Glider where I opened it up and read through everything before I started the build.
take that for what it's worth. So, um, I have dug through the instructions. Some interesting things I found uh, caused me to go back and measure the 2019 model. And I have found that this is a 27.5 centimeter span airplane. Which means it was already legal. And that's why I got curious, because, you know, I went on the website and looked for, oh yeah, it says it's 2020 legal. Um, and surprise, surprise, it looks like no changes were made because it was already a little small last season. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to do the build again. Um, because it's basically the same airplane, as best I can tell. So, whatever. What can you do? Um... Y'all have to endure watching me build this airplane again. You'll live. Um, anyway, some people fussed at me last time because I deviated from the instructions. So, guess what? You get to see what you were looking for. Which is me building it exactly per the plans. Except that I probably won't. But hey, whatever. That also means it probably has the CG marked in the same place, which we are about to verify, um, and that means I get to do it if that's true, because that wasn't updated. Alright, so plywood parts, tail surfaces, it builds two airplanes like we said, uh, nice light wood for the fuselage, Ooh, whoa, okay, laser cutting is a little too good there. That's a fairly nice light sheet of wood. It's not super light, but it's nice. Um, so, slide that out of the way. And I'm going to check these CG marks. See if I can get them to line up here. There we go. Yep, CG marks are in exactly the same spot. So, yeah. Um, but, anyway. Let's build out the jigs and all that stuff, and we'll take a look. I would really dig, I bet I'd find that I have the old ones up on top of the shelf, but is what it is. They do say you can lightly sand everything, yada 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 yada. Um, I'm going to assume most people don't have the time to sand an entire sheet of wood uh, to the extent that they'll, they'll actually make a difference. Um, as I know, most Science Olympiad students struggle even to do the basic airfoiling that uh, we have on the protégés. Um, that's one of the th reasons we've spent a lot of time trying to make the protégés fly well, even if you don't have to, even if you don't, you know, sand them the way that we say to sand them. Um, is what it is. But overall, looks like very good quality wood. So there's my jigs. I'll go ahead and pop this other wing tip out. Because we need it out of the way anyway. Come on, I don't know. You can do it. Um, Stevens Arrow does an amazing job at laser cutting. They have gained a reputation for that. And that's one of the reasons their kits are so expensive, is that. Um, they are able to deliver on all of that. And um, even on airplanes that, in my opinion, um, have, may have some structural issues, um, the, the bottom line is that even with any structural issues, their planes still do fly amazing. However, it's not just the flying, it's the build. They build fantastically well. Now, let's see, right hand and left hand jigs there. Make sure I've got everything I need. Okay. This actually fits a little on the tight side, not too bad. One of the things that the guys at Steven Zero spend a lot of time on is having precision cutting wood. Oh, that's 
let's not do that. So they tune their kerf width and all that to get an exact fit with no um, error whatsoever. So everything fits very, very exactly. Um, okay, so the wing's in place. Now I can come in here and drop this in. And it's what they call a, a zipper fit. Um, I'm sure there's a different term that's more technically correct, but um, the other thing is they tell you to use, you know, like thin CA. I don't have any on hand, so I'm making do with what I've got. I don't particularly enjoy using thin CA most of the time. Even though I know it would work amazing for this kit, because this kit is specifically designed around thin CA. And there we go. Little fingers are getting in the stuff. As soon as I get this wing out, I think the little boy is about to have a nap time. It is getting to be nap time for him. So. There we go, there's a wing. I don't care what the instructions say, I'm standing at least the bottom of those joints because it makes them vastly better. But I'm obeying what you guys said. Don't sand the edges because the instructions so say don't sand the edges. So fine, I'm not going to sand the edges because y'all said that the instructions said that I shouldn't sand the edges. Just going to check the fit here. The wing mounts, I don't know if you can see that. So if you see here, you've got it sticking up from the edges so you get this little bit of under camber. Um, the thing, one of the things that amazes me is this notch here, zero slot. They can deliver on that every time. I don't have a laser cutting rig that's able to deliver that. I just, I, I don't. I'm sure they're using some sort of vacuum hold down and all that. Um, but I've never been able to get that kind of consistency, and I spent a fair amount of energy on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and no, I'm not. I don't remember what order are you going. What order does you go in? I don't know. Um, I do know. I do know. Because I've built this airplane before. The way you do this, that's not right. These... These are sided. Side, so that your ballast is contained inside the cutesy little ballast box thing. Now, last year's kit included some things that are not in this one. I hope I'm not losing my mind. No. I am quite correct that I am missing a couple of parts. And here's why. Last year's kit included a piece of um, aluminum tubing that you would put through this hole right here. And so it would allow you to line up these guys. Last year's kit also included the little nose extensions because this is a really short airplane and it comes out under length. And so it included the little nose extensions that you would glue on the front, which are, you can see, on mine. And they're missing. Guys, I waited uh, two weeks to get this kit, which I don't ding that. It takes me that long a lot of times. It's missing a couple of parts. Now I'm sure if I emailed Steven Zero, um, that would be dealt with. However, I was quite surprised at how long it took me to get this kit. 
uh, given that St Stevens is a very much a mass production um, outfit uh, for for model airplanes, and I don't know, guess I'm, I'm a little hey no I am I am a little disappointed. Um, I still like the kit. It's still a cool airplane. Um, I'm still not using the jigs supplied with it to get the fuselage on straight. No, I am. So there. That does not change the fact that I'm missing parts. And that's a little disturbing to me. Again, I, I deal with this. We occasionally have customers come to us, yeah, with, with that. But the bottom line is, um, we are very, very, very small outfits. So it's to be expected that we would have issues of that nature uh, on, on occasion, and it's less expected that an outfit the size of Stevens Arrow would. So. I don't know. I think I'm making too much of this. Because like I said, I deal with the same issues. Um, I'm just a little bummed out that I bought this kit. It turns out that it's the same as last year's kit in every way. The CG issue has not been corrected. Um, and then it's missing parts on top of everything else that has me frustrated the snot out of. And I'm not even getting this on right because I'm screwing it up because I'm bouncing back and forth between making excuses for it and justifying it because I do kind of like the kit. And I think I'm being unreasonable and all that crap and Whatever. All right. Wrong piece. Right piece. Basically, I've resorted to, I'm not even using the alignment pin because reasons. It worked great when I used it last year, but since I'm using a piece of wire that I grabbed off the table, go figure. One thing that is not to be argued with, these build really, really, really fast. This one and the Guru Glider, without question, build the fastest of any of these gliders. Now, I am right-handed, so I'm going to use the right-hand jig. And I'm going to look at this, looking from the back. I'm going to stick this guy. Don't know exactly where. Enough. That's to give me my stab tilt and mount this with the lettering up. The reason for left hand versus right hand is left handed, uh, you want the airplane to glide to the right, right handed, you want it to glide to the left. As before, everything notches in gorgeously. Commentary. Told you it's nap time for the boy. Alright, got that off. Come back here. 
And then the last thing is vertical stab goes on the left side because that has a notch that is labeled right hand. And glue it in there. It does have a little gap so you can swing it free. I don't really like those um, because at high speeds they tend to deflect and then all sorts of bad sauce stuff begins to kick in. But it's there. I've got left rudder offset, yada yada. So, finished airplane. Now we've got to CG it. I know to CG it ahead of where the instructions say to CG it because it is the same airplane as before, just with fewer parts. So you don't get the 1.1 multiplier bonus, which is a serious issue because if you show up with this, I mean, like every other competitor is going to get that bonus. It's one of the things that makes this airplane difficult to fly as a low ceiling glider is it has that real short tail moment. And yeah. I get it. It makes it easier to package the plane up, but still. If I CG it this is the other thing that kind of bums me out. I'm balancing aft of CG limit with the entire ballast box filled up. And I had this issue last year. And I'm going to have it again. So my plane that has this beautiful little ballast box now has glue stuck out all over the sides of it just in order to get even up to the factory recommended CG which is in fact too far aft as we have demonstrated through actual testing. So that's what I end up with and I don't have a problem with that ordinarily except that the airplane has a ballast box where all the clay is supposed to go and the clay does not fit in the ballast box. Guys get it right. I know y'all are capable of this. You all build amazing airplanes. Get that right. Get the parts count right. Get the CG marks right. I know y'all are capable of that. This airplane is capable of flying amazing, so do the things that you, the things. But this is a heavier glider, so we're going to go outside. Wind is about the same as it was last time I flew, did this a review of Steven's aeroplane. Um, and it's still tail heavy. I put even more clay on the nose. And now, there we go, finally. Bang! We're starting to crank into the left there. And I don't know if you can see that real well, but there's a slight twist. Very, very, very faint, but it is there. The plane will not fly until I get rid of that. I don't know if you can see that. It's there. It's very slight. This wing is twisted higher than the other one, so we can't fly it to the right without it spiraling in. Alright, so what I'm going to do to fix that, twist that down a little bit, and twist this wing up. There we go. We'll just do that. I'll re-glue it in a minute. Alright, let's try that. Well, that went, that went weird sauce. What happened there? Okay then. Very sensitive little airplane. Very sensitive little airplane. Let's try again. Oh, there we go, better. Let's go over here and chuck it. Like properly chuck it. That was different. I don't like what I'm seeing. This one did not is not flying like the other one. 
not much tendency to recover. All right, let's try throwing it in the right bank then. No, no, it's starting to pull out. It's starting to get over farther away from trees and we'll try again. There we go. And we're gliding. We're still gliding. And barely missed impact. All right, so we got the airplane mostly trimmed out here. Um, well, no, we don't. We've got it. We've got good initial trim. And we don't know a whole lot more beyond that. Now, what I'm going to do, you know, I twisted that wing some. And I'm basically taking most of the twist out. And then we're going to weigh it. And we're going to see what the weight looks like. Um, not too optimistic at this point. So, competitively, uh, for high ceilings again, pretty good airplane. Um, except for the fact that the instructions say not to airfoil it or anything. Alright, yeah, that's 8.3, almost 8.4 grams. Um, so the problem we're running into here that, that I see is, if you're a student that uses too much glue, you're going to come up against the 10 gram maximum weight pretty easily with this, so... Um, have an issue there. I really do. The instructions say 6 grams, and I'm sure you can build it to 6 grams until you put clay on it to make it fly. Um, guys, short nose. Way too short. So, I've got, I've got issues here. So, the, the build quality of the airplane is amazing. The technical side has issues, and those issues have got to be resolved. I mean, seriously, got to fix that. That's not, not up to snuff. Um, yeah, I'm, again, this is the second one of these I've built. It's the same as last year's. Like, it is identical to last year's in every way, shape, and form. That. Yeah, they are identical. So, I got last year's flying honestly better than this one, and it's lighter by a significant amount. The wood quality looks good, I don't, I don't know. Um, maybe if you sanded it down some more, but how much do you sand it? Anyway, again, I, I guess I'm getting irritated. Um, it started with missing parts and went on with uh, some other fitment issues, which, I mean, last year, look, I kind of screwed things up a little last year, but I also did the, uh, used the two open nose things, which I shouldn't have. I see now that I made a mistake on that. Um, but that allowed, I don't know, it, re it flat out required less clay last time. I don't know why. They're using a different type of clay, and I don't know if it's less dense or what. Um, but... I don't, yeah. Still a nice, fun airplane. It is a nice, fun airplane. I'm going to keep telling myself that. Because it is true. But it's making me mad. It's making me very mad. Hi, I'm Josh Finn. This is Hope. We are in J&H Aerospace. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, how about subscribe to our channel and check out jhaerospace.com for new free flight products and all of the tooling that you'll need to build them. Thanks for watching.